Hey, Fight fans, I'm Sarah Davis, and I hope you had a fantastic weekend. George St. Pierre sure did after an impressive comeback at UFC 154. And we'll be talking about that with our MMA panel, John Ramdeen and Robin Black. We also have a few other newsmakers to get to as Hennon Burrell could be fighting sooner than you thought. And somehow, Justin Bieber is making the MMA headlines. Let's get started. It sounds like interim bantamweight champion Hennon Burrell is going to be forced to defend his title, while bantamweight champ Dominic Cruz is still out with a surgically repaired knee. Dana White said that Burrell will likely face Michael McDonald, who most recently knocked out Miguel Torres at UFC 145. Pop megastar Justin Bieber makes the MMA news by way of head rush apparel. There's a rumor that the Biebs might buy out the company to change his image from pretty boy to something a little more rough around the edges. Bieber's dad has been a longtime supporter of the company and used to be an amateur Muay Thai boxer. And George St. Pierre became the UFC's undisputed welterweight champion this weekend when he grinded his way to a unanimous decision win over the former interim belt holder Carlos Condit. The win makes the GSP Silva super fight more of a reality, but at the post-fight presser, Dana White said that Johnny Hendricks would be next in line for a title shot. That wraps up our newsmakers. Now it's over to our MMA panel and Ram Dean and Robin. What do you guys think comes first, GSP and Silva or GSP and Hendricks? Hmm, I don't think either. Yes, Johnny <laughs> Hendricks had a very impressive performance over Martin Campman, but when you're trying to sell a fight with George St. Pierre, well, you have to go with guys that people know. And I think at the top of that list is Nick Diaz, as long as he can get over Josh Koscheck, and that's the fight that's rumored for early 2013. And I think that's the, fa that's the fight most fight fans want to see right now. Yeah, and I mean, we are fight fans, and there's something we want. And that's great. We want stuff. George St. Pierre is the champion. This guy has smash marks all over his face right now. He wants to sit on a beach and chase women and have cocktails. Uh, Johnny Hendricks did look impressive, yes, taking out both John Fitch and Martin Campman. But there's so many challengers right now in the 170-pound class, and I think you got to sort that out right now. What happens if Rory McDonald comes out and buzzsaws BJ Penn at the Fox 5 show? I think maybe he should leapfrog a couple of fighters, maybe get that rematch with Carlos Condit, or maybe a fight with Johnny Hendricks between uh, Rory McDonald and Big Rig. So right now the welterweight division kind of has to sort itself out first before we have a viable challenger for George St. Pierre. For sure, and I mean, again, this is one of those things. These are not racehorses. These are not race cars. These are not machines. These are human beings, and that human being today, George St. Pierre, is sore and tired, and the last thing he wants to do is talk about any of this. So go ahead and, and and let's watch BJ versus Rory, and let's make some of these other fights, and let's see what Nick Diaz does. And in the meantime, George is going to uh, enjoy some time off. I think the UFC has a bigger problem on their hand, and that is really trying to figure out the 135-pound weight class. George St. Pierre has clearly cemented himself as the top two draws in the organization. We all know that people want to tune in to see George St. Pierre and John Jones and Anderson Silva. But when you talk about the 135-pound division, people are simply confused. Dominic Cruz has not competed in such a long time. Hannon Burrell, yes, beat Uriah Faber, but hasn't competed since that show. So, and Michael McDonald, yes, this guy is a, an extreme talent and is going to dominate the division, I think, in One the day. future. But I think right now you have to go with some guys that have some uh, some fights under their belts, some interesting stories, and I think maybe a fight with uh, Brad Pickett might be more interesting to casual fans than a fight with Michael McDonald right now. Yeah, and I mean, let's take a look at these guys. Michael McDonald, 21 years old, unbelievable talent, super explosive. This kid's going to be the future. The John Ramdeans of the world know who he is. The rest of the fans, they don't really know him yet. And then you got Hannon Burrell, kind of an odd-looking character, really skilled. This kid can move. But again, what's a Hannon Burrell? The average fan really doesn't know. And even Dominic Cruz, the champ. Most people don't really know who he is. So the job of the UFC is to find the guy who excites people. And I love your idea. Brad Pickett, he's this uh, odd-talking British guy who wears a hat and likes to punch people in the face. We need guys like that to break this division. Unfortunately for Brad Pickett, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, he has got this fight with Eddie Wineland, and it is going to be a barn burner. 
and he can insert himself into the title picture with a dominant performance over Brad Pickett. So I think the UFC should focus on building some of the guys that they have right now, guys that are skilled, but it, the dilemma is you have this casual audience that all it takes is one loss and you drop down to the bottom of the rankings in their eyes. Yeah, the conversational dilemma is odd too. I mean, people watching Fight Network, you guys, you know fighting. You know who these people are. It's the people who don't. The people who are outside just kind of hanging out in a bar and hear these fights popping up from weekend to weekend. So we will have conversations often about what's a great fight for excitement, what's a great fight for all of us to watch, but there's also what's a great fight for the business. And they're always two different things. And of course, the UFC has been talking about this fight between George St. Pierre and Anderson Silva. We heard at the post-fight press conference that George St. Pierre doesn't really seem to be interested uh, in fighting that fight unless it is at 170 pounds. Uh, he's not interested in the catchweight bout. We heard him say that Anderson Silva has fought at 168 pounds. I have a hard time believing that Anderson Silva would be able to get down to 170 yeah. pounds at this stage of his career. But I think George St. Pierre... He let everybody know that really that is not the fight that he's looking forward to right now. But you mentioned it. Give this guy a break. Let him take a vacation. Let's sort out the welterweight division because we also have a fight between John Fitch and Damian Maya. And if Damian Maya comes out and takes out John Fitch quickly, you have to be you have to consider this guy a front runner runner as well in the uh, 170 pound division. For sure. And back to your idea, your point about GSP making this fight with Anderson Silva. These fighters win fights by having great strategies and intimidating people a little bit and being pushy, pushing, driving. That's how they win these uh, negotiation battles as well. And what you hear come out of George St. Pierre's mouth and what you hear out of Anderson Silva's mouth has very little to do with reality and a whole lot to do with game plans of making the fight. Uh, George does not want to go up to 185 pounds or a catch weight of 180 pounds and be forced to come down to 170. He says his body simply can't handle it. And I don't, I can't blame him, can you? No way. I wouldn't go up to 185 if my body's meant to be at 170. Exactly. You look good at 185. Not, <laughs> which is not but meant to be at either of those weights. <laughs> okay, thanks, guys. Now, don't forget, when you're out and about and not watching Fight Network, you can still stay on top of the latest combat sports news by using our iPhone app. The stories are constantly updated, and the app is really user-friendly. So just make sure you visit your iPhone app store and visit Fight Network or, or search Fight Network for the app. Now don't miss the highlights from Bellator 81 coming up next on Fight News Now Extra.